Hi, this is Gary with MacMost.com. Let me show you how to build an interactive quiz using Keynote on a Mac. MacMost is brought to you thanks to a great group of more than 1,000 supporters. Go to MacMost.com slash Patreon. There you can read more about the Patreon campaign, join us, and get exclusive content and course discounts. So you can use Keynote for a lot more than just building linear presentations that go from slide to slide. By using the functionality of being able to link to a slide from some text or an object you can create interactive quizzes. So someone playing the Keynote presentation on their Mac, iPad, or iPhone could choose from a, a list of answers and then it will jump to the appropriate slide depending upon what they select. So in Keynote here let's just start off with a simple basic white presentation. And we'll create a title slide here. And let's add a new slide and I'm just going to make it a blank slide. And on this slide I'm going to ask the first question. So let's create a text box here and I'll put the question. And now let's make it a larger font size. So I'm going to go to Format Text over here and I'm going to increase the font size let's say to 80 and make it bold and let's make the text color black. And then I'm going to move this to the top of the screen right here. Let's go ahead and for text here you can see this is the caption format which is what a text box will automatically use. Let's update that style. So from now on every new text box we create will use this style here. Now let's put some answers here. So I'm going to create a text box and I'm going to type the first answer. And let's put that up here a little bit and I'm going to add three more answers. I'm going to option drag to duplicate this and then change the text. And as you can see when I option drag the third one it even allows me to space them evenly. Now let's make the font size for all three of these a little bit smaller since maybe they should be a bit smaller than the question itself. And let's left justify those. So under Format Text I'll do Left Justify and then I'm going to go to Arrange, Align Objects, Align Left like that. So let's make this more interesting by dragging an image. I'm just going to drag and drop an image in here and it's just a photo here. Expand it a bit. I'm going to arrange, send it to the back. It's a bit bright so I'm going to go to Format Image and then click on the Adjust Image button there and let's decrease the contrast quite a bit so it kind of fades into the background like that. So now the user should be able to click and choose one of these answers. But let's actually create a place for them to click on. A button. I'm going to use a shape here and I'm going to use a circle. I take the circle and put it to the left here of this answer. And let's go into Format Style and change the color fill a little bit. Let's make it a dark blue and maybe with a line border there that's white so it stands out like that. So that's the button to click on. And I'm going to option drag to create four of these like that. So the idea is you click on one of these to choose your answer. So now let's have the first answer. I'm going to duplicate the slide. I'm going to select the slide and just duplicate selection or command D. And I'm going to take away the other answers and the button to click on. So if you click on the first one you go to this screen right here. So let's now put a description of this answer here. I'm going to add another text box here and then paste in an answer here. Uh, let's also make that something smaller like that. Maybe even change the color since this is a wrong answer. Let's change the text color to like a dark red there. And let's maybe move that down towards the bottom like that. Now we want to have a way since the answer is wrong to get back to the question so that we can try another answer. So let's add another shape here. I'm going to add a rounded rectangle like that. Let's change the color to red there. It's a wrong answer. Uh, add a border and we'll put that at the bottom here. We can put the text in it. Back. Or we could say try again or something like that. So you click here and then it'll go here and then you get to go back here. Let's put the other answers in place. So I'm going to duplicate this. I'm going to go here and take the second answer, copy that, paste that in here. 
like that. And then I'm going to change the text underneath. You know, this text could be something informative. So you have something like that. Let's duplicate the slide again and let's do the same thing. Here is the next incorrect answer. This one. And put it in there. And then we have a bit of information about that incorrect answer. Duplicate again and grab this one here. And that's the correct answer. So we've got that. Let's change this button here and have it be green instead. Indicate correct and also this text here. Let's make that green. And then we'll do continue because you'll go to the next question. So let's wire this all up. In here, if you click here, you should go to slide number three. So let's select that. And if we go to Format, Add Link, we can add a link to a slide. Note that the keyboard shortcut is Command K. It's a good thing there's a default shortcut for that because we're going to use this a lot. So we'll do that and we'll say we'll go to slide number three. Then we'll select this and we'll do Command K. And we'll do slide four. And then we'll do this one, Command K. We'll do slide five. And this one, Command K. And we'll do slide six. And we need to have the appropriate link here for this button. So this back button here, we should have it go to slide two, which is that question there. So we want to do that for each one of these. If we had actually done that when we created the first wrong answer, uh, then when we duplicated the slide, it would have just carried over. So it would have been easier to do it then. So now we have a way to get back. And for this one, it's actually going to go to the next question. So I'm going to go to this question here. I'm going to duplicate it, drag it down there. Uh, this will be the next question. So Put in another question in there. Um, I'm not going to worry about the answers right now, like that. But I want to have this here link to the next question. So this will go to slide seven. So let's try this out so far. If I hit play, I have to advance to the next slide. So I will click the right arrow there, and I am on this slide with the questions. Here are the Buttons here, you can see the pointer even changes to a hand when I'm over each one of these. Let's click here, goes there. We can go back here and go back here, back and here. And then this one goes to the next question. So let's go and continue to do things. Let's add a sound to this. I can drag and drop a sound here just onto the slide and drop it in. That's the wrong answer sound. I'm going to stick it up here in the upper right hand corner. And you can see it's Start Audio on Click. No, I want it to start automatically. And then with it selected, I'm going to copy it and paste it here, paste it here. But here I'm going to drag another sound. So I'll stick that there. This won't start on click either. So now we could go here, play. So now we have sounds that go along with the wrong and correct answers. We also may want to add a button to this screen to get started. So let's go here and copy this button here, paste it in, and we'll change this to start. And this one will click here on this little link icon there and we'll do edit and we'll say this will be slide two. So now we have a way to actually get from the intro to the first question. We can color these up a little bit more. Let's uh Go and put a little graphic here to represent the fact that this question is wrong. So we can put it like that. A little sad wombat. I can copy the sad wombat to each one of these. And then here we could do the same thing, but I'm going to replace. I have a happy wombat there. So, of course, what we would do now is we would create this question here and then we would. Maybe duplicate one of these answers and stick it down here and have a wrong answer for this one, like that, and you know, change this text, change this text, 
and make sure we change this to actually go back to, in this case, slide 7 where that question is. So this one here would, for this answer, go to slide 8. The great thing is, is even though you need to specify a number for slides, watch what happens if I were to insert an extra slide here. Like I had a second introductory screen. If I go here now and I look, this is now slide 4. It's moved down automatically. So you can insert slides and the slide links will actually continue to work. So now we're not quite done because if you were to go and play this, say I'm right here, I could use the right arrow to simply go to the next slide. We don't want that. So under the document sidebar there are a couple of slideshow settings. First is we want to automatically play upon open. That will make things a little bit easier. And also we want to change the presentation type to links only so now the arrow keys won't work. Another thing we can do is if this is going to play in a kind of a kiosk mode or maybe it's on a computer that uh, you know, somebody can walk up to and start using, if they stop in the middle of the quiz or perhaps at the end we put a slide saying, you know, thanks for playing and then there's a continue button, um, we want it to automatically go back to the beginning. So we can do restart slideshow of idle for, you know, five minutes. So if it sits there for five minutes by itself, it'll go back to the beginning. We could also put some music on this. We can add another sound here that's maybe just a piece of music. And when we do that, we can have it loop and then have kind of an attraction loop. So you could have this be something much more interesting and even put a video on it if you want. Drag and drop some sort of video here. And that way, if it's on slide one, it looks kind of interesting. Somebody walks up to it and they press the start button and then it goes to the first question. So those are the basics of how to do it there. Just need to keep adding more questions and obviously you can do all sorts of things with this. For instance, the questionnaire can actually have an image on it and the question is related to that image. Or it could even be a video or a sound. So you can use all sorts of media in a quiz presentation like this since Keynote handles those things pretty easily. But there are limitations. Here's what you can't do. You can't randomize the order of the answers, of course, because they're static on the page. You can't randomize the order of the questions either. It's all going to be hardwired in as to which question is first. And you can't keep a running tally of how many times they got something right or wrong. Keynote just doesn't have that kind of functionality in it. And another thing you can't do is you can't prevent somebody from leaving the presentation. They can't use the forward arrow key or space bar or anything like that. They have to click on a link to go somewhere. But you can always hit the Escape key to exit. So it's not great for completely unmanned kiosks. But it does work really well in a classroom situation or perhaps in a convention center expo type of situation where the computer is running and people can go up to it and there's somebody there to kind of keep an eye on it. And of course you can also use this as an actual real presentation. Putting some slides like this up on the screen and asking for audience participation for answering the questions. Or perhaps you can just be the presenter and choose wrong answers and then the right answer to then make a point. Hope you found this useful and hope it gives you some ideas of more things you can do with Keynote. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, click the thumbs up button below to let me know. I publish new tutorials each weekday. Hit the subscribe button so you don't miss out.